Hey guys, Yips here coming out with you another video, and this one's going to be about how to analyze your World of Warcraft logs. And the reason I wanted to bring attention to this is I think a lot of people aren't playing um, a UA Warlock as efficiently as you could be playing it. I don't think a lot of people are, are playing Warlock um, perhaps in the right way when running a certain build and they're not using a lot of their abilities. Um, at the right times, and this is very evident when you view someone's log on World of Warcraft. So, this is something I want to show you guys, so you can go back after you kill a boss. This is going to be a for a single target mostly, and you can go back after you kill a boss, and you can look at your logs, and you can kind of see, you know, like, did I do this well, did I do this well, and I can show you where to look at your log to see what portions um, you were doing well and what portions you weren't doing so well. So, I have three logs here. One of them's going to be of myself. One of them's going to be of another um, good UA warlock who um, is from EU that I know of. He's very, very good as well. And then the last one's going to be of a warlock that has a lot of gear. Um, he has good legendaries and things like that, but he doesn't pull so great DPS on a fight that is similar to ours. Um, so first off, I want to start with uh, my log. So I want to compare just the graph. The graph can kind of say a lot about what an affliction warlock's doing. And I want to compare my graph to the other Warlock's graphs, and that's the first thing I want to go over. So you can see in my graph, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of valleys and, and peaks and things like that. There's a lot of mountains in my graph. And if you look at the next Warlock, which is another top Warlock, there's a lot of valleys and peaks in his graph as well. And, and if you want to look at the Warlock that didn't do so well, it's pretty well a flat line. I mean, there are some very minor valleys and peaks and things like that. There's a big dip here. Presumably he gets mind controlled or something like that. Um, on Athendra, but you can see the valleys and peaks just aren't there. At the beginning during Lust it's there, but then it's just a pretty much flat line around 400k where you can see um, Walrix and I have the very, very clear, very, very distinct up and downs during the fight. And those are going to be shown uh, in the logs and why that's happening. So our fights are only 4 minutes, his fight is 6 minutes, so slightly longer, so he does have more casts than us, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. So the most important thing to look at is not really, you don't really want to look at this damage table too much. Obviously this damage table can be fairly indicative of how much your UA was doing relative to your agony. Um, you can look at the uptime percents and stuff like that. That's that that's pretty much all you want to take from here is like you want to look at uptime percents. You see um, very good uptime percents on our dots from Eowalix, like above 95. Here, you know, same sort of deal. He was above 95%, but why was his DPS so much lower? So my DPS, I can say for this video, was 473k. Walrix was 400 and like 20k, but he doesn't have a legendary, so you know that could be upped a lot. And then this Warlocks was like 300 and something. Let me just check really quick. Um, 360k DPS, and his gear way out gears that he should be doing way more. I'm pretty sure with the gear that he has. So just going back to the lock. So the only thing you want to check on this this damage chart is um, there's not really much to look at here. Just uptime percent, really. You don't really want to worry too much about the damage numbers. The damage numbers can tell you things like if your average agony cast isn't doing very much, then you're probably refreshing it too soon. But um, you can kind of ignore this as it's not really what's going to tell you the tale of the story of doing DPS in a uh, in a raid. So uh, the first thing you want to look at is your graph. See if your graph has these um, peaks and valleys. Um, and if it's not having those peaks and valleys, then you want to you know keep going with this video. And I'm going to show you guys how we generate those peaks and valleys in our in our World of Warcraft logs. So what you want to go to next is you want to go to casts. Well, first, yeah, go to casts. Um, I would start by unchecking everything on the cast, so we're going to go to cast on all three of these logs. Um, if you don't know how to do casts, all you have to do is just, it will sh it, it will automatically show the number one, you know, button you press, you just click it, and it will turn everything off. And to, like, turn something on, you just click it, and it will show you when you casted these abilities during the fight. So, every lock in this video is running Soul Effigy, so when I click on Ability Like Corruption, you should see, you know, two lines, one cast on the target, and then one cast on the Soul Effigy pretty much immediately after. And the reason that that is, is because um, the dot timers on your Soul Effigy and the boss should be relatively similar, so you should be refreshing them pretty much one after the other. If you look at my Agonies, they pretty much line up perfectly with my Soul Effigy. So basically, I Agony the boss, I Corruption the boss, I Agony my uh, Effigy, I Corruption my Effigy, and you see that theme going out throughout the entire boss fight. Um, you do see a little bit of variance with the Corruption in here, and that's just because sometimes during Warm, I use my Corruption as a filler. Um, if I'm just like, you know, it has a little bit of an over-pandemic duration, but I have to use movement or something like that, I'll use a corruption as a filler. Same sort of thing with Agony. A couple times in here, he uses a filler, but you can generally see, you know, you want to look for those bars. 
you should basically just see a bunch of like little sandwiches throughout the throughout the log for all of those um, corruption, agony, and siphon life. And let's just go look at Walrex logs. You kind of see those bars. It's a little more sporadic, but I mean, he might just be using siphon life as his filler. You look at his agony, see these bars that are appearing. Very, very good, right? He uses a couple as a filler, but you do see the theme of the bars going through it as well. And if you look at the corruption, I guess he's playing absolute corruption, which is fine. He's playing absolute corruption, so he loses two, but you see the two bars or whatever, right? So... Um, you just want to be seeing these bars and see how they're rate like spaced really really close together. That means you're refreshing them around the same time. Um, we go to the warlock who wasn't doing as much DPS log, and we look at his agony cast, and it's hard to find the bars here, isn't it? I mean, there's a couple at the start, right? And then during the fight, it starts to get a little hectic. He starts to be pressing agony a little bit too often. So this is where you can see, without this even spacing, like we see here on these agonies. So let's highlight the agonies here. You see the even spacing with the agonies? That means you're doing good pandemic refreshes. See the even spacing on the agonies? It means you're doing good pandemic refreshes. You see the spacing on the agonies? Not so great pandemic refreshes. Obviously, um, this graph has a little bit of a longer range. It goes up to six minutes, but still, I mean, like, this bunch of agonies, this bunch of agonies, this bunch of agonies, they're all too close together um, to really promote you know, good use of the entire duration. So that's something you can kind of see and um, if you're not doing so well on your pandemic timings, you'll see a lot of bars that are really, really close together when they should be more evenly spaced apart like this. Um, let's just take a look at this guy's siphon life usage. Again, it's 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 better than the it's better than the agony. It's better than the agony, but it's still still not great. You see, like here and here, just like over usage and corruption. Um, corruption's actually pretty good. This is pretty evenly spaced, except exceptionally well for a uh, 6 minute and 30 second fight. So, corruption was pretty good. Again, we see like these refreshes here and things like that. That might just be due to movement or something, you know, you never know, but definitely way too many agony casts. You see at 66 on a for a 6 minute and 45 second encounter. Way 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 too high. So, that's another thing you want to look at. So, the first thing you want to look at is graphs. Then you want to kind of look to see if your warlock has these even bar spacing for your dots to make sure, you know, you're you're utilizing that full pandemic timers and this is a kind of minor thing for DPS. Like these, these even pandemic timers would be a minor thing to increase DPS. You know what I mean? Like it'll be a significant change, but it, it's not going to be the main thing that pushes you past. You know, whatever barrier you might be having. The next, the next thing that I'm going to be showing you is what has to do with those, you know, peaks and valleys uh, in the video. So, or in the um, in the graphs. So I'm going to click all this stuff off. Um, yeah, one second. Okay. So the next thing I want to look at is the unstable affliction usage. And this is probably the most important part of the video. So, Unstable Affliction is a very, 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 very important part of a Warlock's DPS rotation, okay? You want to be using Unstable Affliction only, only, only during Reap Souls, or if you're getting capped on Soul Shards, or, you know, you have, like, three plus shards, you're generating a fourth one, and you just want to, like, you know, use it to get it out there. You don't want to be using Unstable Affliction, like at a consistent rate. You don't want to see your unstable affliction looking like this. You don't want to see consistent, you know, spaces between your unstable afflictions. You want to see these chunks of casts of unstable affliction, okay? So the first thing you want to look for is these chunks, okay? So let's look at Walrix. His unstable affliction, look, chunk, 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 chunk. You want to see all of these little cluster chunks around without too many spaces in between. Obviously, you know, sometimes you have to use one if you're getting soul shard capped. You have to use a couple if you're getting soul shard capped, but generally you want to be seeing these chunks in a log. You don't want to be seeing this. This is a disaster. This is where you have, and I'm not, I'm not picking out this warlock for any specific reason. He's not, he's just a guinea pig that I picked on Warcraft uh, logs that, you know, kind of had this going on for him, but you don't see these chunks of UA. You see like two, two, three, one, two, two, three, like the chunks at the end aren't bad. The chunks at the end are fine, but like, you know, you see one, 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 um, you know, like it's, it's just all over the place, right? You want to really be seeing these chunks and what these chunks correlate to, let me just open this summary up. Um, See this peak here? This peak correlates to these chunks. This peak correlates to this chunk. This peak correlates to this chunk. And you can kind of see that in the graphs, how these little chunks correlate to the peaks. Um, and that's something you really want to be looking for. Now, this UA chunking happens at a very specific time in the fight. You don't just use it whenever. You don't just pop these, you know, I'm not just stacking these UAs for any reason. I'm not just doing it because, oh, I feel like I have the time to cast UA, so I'm just going to chunk it here, right? 
that's not how it works. What you want to look at after UA is you want to click on Reap Souls. So if I quickly, you know, take away the UA, you see the Reap Soul timing. I use a Reap Soul here and here during Lust, and then I use a Reap Soul here, 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 and here. And now when I click on my UA cast, I want you to look which ones disappear. Okay, basically all of the Reap Soul casts disappear behind the UA chunks. Okay, and that's because I'm using Reap after I cast my first or second UA. So all my UAs in these chunks are being affected by that Reap Soul because they actively, um, it actively buffs the UAs when you press it. It doesn't snapshot. So you can see all of these, all of these little Reap casts. Look what happens when I press UA. They all cover those Reap Souls. So what that means is all of these UA stacks are getting buffed by my Reap Soul. And since they're all getting buffed by Reap Soul, that means I'm just doing so, so, so much more damage than I would be if I was just, you know, periodically using my UAs and randomly using my Reap Souls and not buffing all these UAs with that Reap because you really want that increased damage from those Reap Souls and the increased traits, um, the double traits and things like that as it's, it's a huge portion of your damage. It really, really does up it a lot. I would say it up it's, you know, 20 to 30k if you're not really utilizing this uh, method effectively. So, this is my log. You can see those chunks are really overlapped by the Reap. Let's go check Walrix. So here is his Unstable Affliction cast, and let's look at his Reap Soul cast. You see one, two, three, four, five. You can kind of ignore the end of the fight because at the end of the fight, you're just trying to get out as many as you can, right? You're just trying to use it to burn down the boss. But let's look and see what happens when we click on Unstable Affliction. Let's see these chunks uh, disappear. Boom. Look at that. The exact same sort of thing. When you press Unstable Affliction, all of the chunks disappear, and that's what you want to see. You want to see these chunks be utilized around, um, around Reap Souls. So every time that you're using UA in a chunk, you want to see a Reap Soul being popped, and that's exactly what's happening. We see here a bunch of UAs are being cast. We see here he's just using a couple, probably at like the end of his pot or something like that. It's fine. You wait a little bit until your next Reap Soul, you know, stacks up a little bit, and you chunk again, and then you chunk again, and then you chunk and you chunk. So this is really the major, you know, difference with, that's going to separate a good warlock from a mediocre warlock is is these chunks and these separations of the reap souls. So this is really something you want to look for in your logs. And let's just go look at the guinea pig log, pig log really quickly. So we see his on in you know his UA cast here. And let's just um, take these off and look at his look at his um, reap casts. So here is reap cast. He has one, two, three, four, five reap casts evenly spaced. And let's see what happens when you click on his UAs. They don't disappear at all. They're still there. They're still in the open. He uses it on what? He uses it on one UA here on two UAs here, on one UA, on two UAs, on three UAs. So this one's okay, right? But look at all of these UAs that are just not being buffed by Reap Soul. There's like one, two, three, four. Like there's so many that are just missing out on this buff that he's just losing so much damage because he could be using these with Reap Souls, but he's, he's not. He's spacing them out way, way, way too much. He's not using them at an effective time and you don't see the constant theme of these chunks that we do here every time we click on it those reaps are disappearing right so I mean that's the main part of the video um, is this reap soul usage that you really want to look for in your logs so just to recap really quickly because I think that's about all there is to really go over in a work off log um, that's important the other thing that I just quickly 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 want to touch on um, before I wrap this video up is to look at buffs um, and you just want to be seeing good usage of your pot and your reap souls. See like how much active time on reap souls you had. It's kind of it's kind of RNG dependent on the fight, but you see you know Walrix had you know only 33% of time. Um, this guy had 36%. I think I had a little higher. I had 55%. So maybe I got a little bit better RNG on that fight or something like that. But um, you know you can see your percent reap soul up time. You can see your you know when you're using your pot things like that. Um, and you know all of that will correlate on the graph and you can really you know pick and choose things to uh, to look at on a log but those are the three things that I really wanted to highlight when looking at a Warcraft log and just to quickly recap you want to be looking at you know you want to see a lot of peaks and valleys on a, on a UA Warlock log because you want to see those peaks and valleys from the UAs you want to look at casts and you want to see these even bar spacings on your dots like this you want to see those even bar spacings. You just want to see a bunch of sandwiches. You don't want to see um, any funny business that's looking like... Uh, you want to see anything that looks like this. You want, to, you want to see stuff that looks like this. Much better. Much cleaner. And you want to see, again, the very last thing, the, probably the most important thing, um, is, 
is the clumping of the unstable afflictions with the reap souls. You want to see this sort of business going on. So if you're looking at your log and you're seeing things that are different than this, you know, recognize the things that are different. See if you can um, pick those out. And if, you know, you can make changes to that and it helps you out, let me know. Um, if you have questions, let me know. This is probably a confusing video for some people who don't really analyze um, logs a lot. But um, this is an important tool, you know what I mean? If you're analyzing your logs and you're looking and seeing, you know, what am I doing wrong here? This is a really, really good way to go about doing that and seeing, you know, am I getting good use out of my reap souls? Am I getting good use out of my UAs? Is my agony spacing good? Am I, you know, using pandemic efficiently? Um, uh, do I have good dot uptime? Do I have all those peaks and valleys that he's been talking about? So if you can really go into your log, analyze that, look at that, see what you're doing, um, I think it's going to help a lot of people out a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people are making mistakes um, playing UA Warlock. I think they're not using Unstable Affliction and uh, the Reap Souls um, at good times. And uh, hopefully this video helped you out. Hopefully you can look at your log, analyze it, and uh, see how you can improve. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, check out my other YouTube videos, and I'll see you guys later.